this is a growing problem and the symptoms of ADHD impact kids across all environments. It's a disorder that affects families and children around the world, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And this month is actually ADHD Awareness Month, the time where doctors are really hoping to educate parents on what they need to know, the bigger picture. Absolutely. And joining us once again in studio with some tips is licensed psychologist Dr. Nicole Birkins to offer some tips on getting properly diagnosed. Good morning. Good to see you once again. Good morning. Thanks for being here. This is such a big topic yeah, for a yeah. lot of families. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. All right, so maybe start with what, we, what can parents do to kind of uh, assess what's happening with their kid and then moving forward get some help? Yeah. Right. Well, anytime a parent has concerns about their child um, in any realm, it's important to connect with that child's health care provider to talk about what the concerns are, whether it's hyperactivity, inattentiveness. A lot of times, especially with ADHD, it's when the child first starts in school mm -hmm. and parent, our teachers and other staff are bringing concerns about how the child is in the school environment. Um, so bringing those concerns to the health care provider and seeking out answers, even if you're told initially, oh, you know, you're child will grow out of it. If you're struggling with things, look for finding somebody um, who can help assess the situation and really get to what the underlying issues are. Because what we call ADHD, it's just a set of symptoms, but we need to understand what's at the root of it for children. And there can be so many different causes or exacerbating factors. And so treatment really needs to be individualized for each child. And let's talk a little bit more about that, because yeah. of course we hear the term or the word medication, right? right. And parents mm -hmm. say that's the last thing maybe that right. such a little body needs right, right now. Right. So talk about some of the other things that are going on that may be that underlying thing um, mm -hmm. where you can stay away from that medication. Absolutely. Well, and, and, and that's an important thing to think about because while medications can be helpful for some children, we know that there are also significant side effects for many kids and some kids just don't respond to them um, at all. So it's important to get to those root issues. So, you know, we mentioned um, in the last segment that nutrition is an important piece, looking at the child's diet, doing blood work even to look at what nutrient levels may be impacting um, the issues that they're having with brain function and development. Sleep is a huge one. Many children are not getting enough good quality sleep. And what's interesting is adults, we think about lack of sleep as, oh, I'm so tired, I can't you know, wake up. In children, lack of sleep actually can manifest as hyperactivity. So kids who are really sleepy and are sleep deprived are bouncing off the walls, are really busy, mm. are impulsive. So that's important to get that um, issue sorted out. Electronic devices is another big one and the studies are showing more and more that as the amount of time increases that kids are spending on devices, it is more and more difficult for them to concentrate, for them to manage their emotions and their behaviors. So that's another factor um, to look at. And then there's the emotional issues for sure. Um, kids, th there are many things that can be going on for kids emotionally that can look like ADHD. Right. So children who have experienced trauma, whether that's at home or at school, it can be even something like bullying, loss of a loved one, um, that can make it very difficult to focus and attend. Anxiety is another piece. Many kids with significant anxiety makes it hard for them to focus and concentrate in school. That can look like ADHD, but in fact, that's a separate problem. So lots of work that needs to be done to dig into what's going on for each individual child. Obviously you're diagnosed, you have the kids who are diagnosed, but yeah. I've read a few articles where teenagers, especially high school age yes. into college, trying to get a hold of the medication mm -hmm. right. for ADHD in That's order right. to focus and do better in school. Yeah. Have you come yeah. across this? Absolutely. It's a big problem. And as more and more prescriptions are written, um, there's more and more of these stimulant medications out there. And the reality is they'll stimulate the frontal cortex of any of us and help us to be able to focus better. But in people who don't really need them, that can cause major issues with dependency, can cause major side effects. So it's a major substance abuse problem that's going on particularly on college campuses now. Mm. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yep. I mean, it's such a wider area. You have older kids, I have younger yeah. kids, but it's clearly a conversation that all parents can talk about. Absolutely. So if there's a parent sitting at home and they're saying, okay, some of these things, I, mm -hmm. you know, what's your message to them? There absolutely is hope. These things are overcomable. We have so many things that we can do to support children and families and improve functioning. So do not give up hope for that and seek out a provider that can really help you get the answers that you need. Very good. And how can folks reach you? Yeah. Uh, my clinic is Horizons Developmental Resource Center, horizonsdrc.com. All right. Thanks for good being here. You. Thank you. All right. 727. Well, they went to Boston.